It is week 12 here of Valorant EGFC, and we have some powerful teams going at each other. The University of Tennessee up against University of Connecticut. My name is Sam Toggs. Joining me, the ever amazing Loki. Loki, these two teams have been, they've, they've met each other once in week three. It was a 2-0 for the University of Tennessee, but a hard fought 2-0. It was pretty close score lines on both of the maps, including one that went 14 and 12, if I remember correctly. Now, we're here again. It's been a very long time since week three, and I know that Connecticut is wanting to get that revenge back in their pockets. Well, if Connecticut wants revenge, they're hitting their stride at a pretty perfect time. Um, going into the end of the split last uh, last semester last year they beat arlington in a three map they beat hawaii in a three map um you know they did really really well against uh depaul as well if we look at the standings we can actually you know see exactly how well they're doing coming into this portion of the year um sadly we didn't get to see them two weeks ago or as i was three weeks ago as they did have a forfeit but for the rest of their play they have been you know consistently strong they beat cincinnati twice and uh in these last two weeks the last one a little bit harder fought but they've gotten their way back into it and they fought their way to that fourth slot on the leaderboard indeed so a, a very impressive showing by the way to be able to get that far and for tk this is going to be a tough battle ahead of them but they did it once and they're looking to do it again these teams they've been forged through the fire and the flames as now we are in week 12 so a long time since then a very a lot of time to grow a lot of time to learn a lot of time to continue to improve yourself as a team continue to make swaps here in the roster as well understanding the meta some nurse have come in since then a lot of different things have changed including what we might see here in our map pool because there is one big thing that has changed a new map has been added and a new map is what we're going to be playing on in our second one at the very least we're going to be starting off on fracture the choice of utk then going into lotus for yukon and if we need to get there the decider map of ascent so i mean loki you know UConn whipping out that Lotus pick must be... I mean, we saw it last week when they were going up against Cincinnati, right? So definitely a lot of confidence here. Yeah. Um, I don't think... You know, we haven't seen Fracture at all on our side of the stream since the last split. Lotus, though, we've been seeing a ton of, not just in the EGF, but in BCT. There's a lot of teams feeling really, really confident on it, even though it's a brand new map. And I think it's kind of like that confidence that they're feeling uh, or or the fact that it is a new map that not everybody is confident on it because that makes it a better arena for the teams who do want to work around on it a little bit more. Now, Connecticut did not necessarily win on this map last week, but maybe now they've come back. They've tooled around with it a little bit more. They've seen what the pros are doing in the VCT. Now they got the idea in their head. Okay. This is what we need to do. We need to have, we need to have the synergy. We need to have, it's, just, it's kind of what Lotus is. It's a, it's a map that with it being so big, right? Three sites on there. It's a map that rewards the aggressive nature of a team more so than what we see with like slower pushes or wanting to rotate or wanting to try to figure out where exactly you need to go. Yeah, and it's an aggressive push that has to be backed up by a good amount of utel. You know, you really want to see that duelist initiator connection that we love here on the EGF, where that aggression is backed up, not just by team positioning, not just by team mechanics, but by actual util and resources being put into the problem. Yeah, but of course, you know, uh, we, we are starting off on Fracture. So Fracture is something that you and I both haven't seen in quite a long time uh, on this stream specifically, though. I mean, Fracture, it's it's kind of that weird map that's like, okay, it's, it, we you know, you see it in the ranked pool and you're like, oh my gosh, we're, on, we're here on Fracture again. So yeah. this was the choice of UTK. This was what they want to go for. And I guess, you know, if, if, if this is what they feel the most confident on, why not? Let's let's see what they're going to be capable of. Uh, Devoliate, party whipping out the Reyna almost immediately. That's an Instalog from them, the Instalog Defoliate Reyna. And this isn't a map that, you know, Tennessee's been able to play 
a whole lot of coming into this one. They haven't been on Fracture, you know, this whole split in the EGF. So this isn't even just a we haven't seen it. UTK hasn't seen it either. Tennessee Volunteers coming into this one just off of this scrim experience so far this split and with it it looks like they're gonna go for a relatively standard comp grab those two initiators you know one with are they actually gonna double up on flashes Ooh, that will be very interesting i like the idea though if they do decide to go that route a pin is still hovering over the neon and uh, curves obviously on that sky uh so give me the potentially the double sure. yeah double duelist versus the double initiate Select your agent. yeah we don't typically see a whole lot of double duelist we don't typically see a whole lot of duelist at this point honestly tennessee is locked in k pin staying on the neon any last second change doesn't look like it so it's going to be double duelist from connecticut the huskies volunteers heading in with double flashes breach and sky okay all right uh, now, obviously, here in more recent times of Valorant, the double initiator a lot more smiled upon than the double duelist in coordinated play, coordinated team play. You get so much more out of your initiators. There's a lot of flashes that are going to be for Tennessee as well. The guiding lights, the, uh, the, the breach flashes. There's so many different ways that you can blind Connecticut quite literally. Now, you still do have the Rain Alleers and you have the Relay Bolts from the Neon, but I don't think you could get nearly as much as what we're hoping, what UConn is hoping to get out of them. Yeah, I honestly, how long has it been since we had a meta where Double Duelist was the correct way to play? I, I don't think we've really had something that's like that since, what, year one of Valorant? Yeah, I mean, Riot's pretty... Right, it's pretty rough on the duelists <laughs> with hitting them a lot with the nerf bat. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is this though from Tennessee? It's gonna be a four stack going up through Sands. Okay. Meanwhile, all by themselves on the other end is the sky sitting in the dogs, trying to smoke them out just a little bit there. Breeze throws in the paint shells to clear out sight. They are gonna be able to get on there thanks to the smokes that are coming through. We still have Defolio who's gonna roll around. Curbs gets the notice. They heard the door opening. They're gonna try and do it, but it's gonna be the 2v1 here for Defoliate, their teammate is going to come and give them that little bit of extra love, but the flash from Nami is going to put Bridge into the ground, and as you can see, the rest of it's not looking one too good remaining. for Tennessee here. Now only one left remaining. It's going to be the KJ. They take down k -Pin. There's still a lot of work left for them to do, and that work, well, it's just not going to get done. Yeah, UConn are there. there, I think, did a perfect retake. You know, played a bit soft, let them run their aggression, let them throw their resources and then choose your engagement safely. Play around your angles, wait for your team. No one overextends, no one overplays. And with that, they're able to just run it right through, only losing two people on that round, which also helps that economy so, so much by not giving the other team that the credit for those kills. Indeed so. Now, hmm. So this time around, rather than wanting to split up, it's just going to be full five stack. Let's go A. Let's not risk it. Let's not take any chances here. I, I, I did kind of like the idea of leaving Bridge behind, or not Bridge, sorry, the Sage Sky, oh my gosh, behind, to try and maybe take some pressure off of the backside push. But the pressure is still going to be continuous with the Foliant there and Nami to get another kill on Tower. Nami down. That is huge for Tennessee. Is it every single kill they get from Yukon levels out that gun difference? Just that ounce more having a gun in the hand is so worth losing, you know, a person. Loses two there, which is not great, but still pretty okay. And caught in this middle section now. Does look like they rotate towards B. They're gonna have two people to have to deal with. I can't see being one of them. Grabs two, looking for the third on King. Five bullets, all they need. And that is said and done. King ends the round with a 3K, no fear. No fear whatsoever. They can't see all the death that's not gonna happen to them. That much is for sure. Yukon only losing two members per round. So really good economy that they have going for them so far 
Now we're going to see what is Tennessee going to do with the guns that they have in their hands. This is their rifle round, and they need to snatch away the bonus from that Jaws, the University of Connecticut. This time again, it's still splitting up. King is going to be all the way over on the other side, hanging up by themselves, by the ropes. Gonna have to be careful here, though, because the turret gets taken down. I have an inkling of an idea that someone is back here, but instead King, abandoning that idea, is going to regroup with the team. It's going to be another five stack push towards A site. Bridge, they're going to be safer now. You're going to see the high ground being smoked off. Napoleon is on site. Flash, though. Unfortunately for Bridge, not able to connect any of the shots onto the head, but they're going to rotate over, throws out the pain shells. It's going to flush the bullet out to make them rotate over. And the bullet, unfortunately, was caught a little bit off guard. Bridge is going to get a second one as Kpin tries to trade it out on the backs of their teammate who falls. But another paint shell, Stan is forced into the corner, takes just a little smidge of damage. But that really is all that's going to happen here. Going to try and go for the quick swing. Unfortunately, Bridge is not going to let that happen. Nami had the Phantom in their hand, but SBL has the aim. Honestly, insane take there. You know, you see Connecticut not nearly as composed that we've come to expect from them. And it seems like they were just kind of shocked to see that aggression, to see that, you know, how clean of a play that was from Tennessee. King there going off on that huge off angle, did a great job of kind of pulling the attention of Connecticut. No one was ready for that A short push right on the site. I want to see Amaze at Defoliate live for as long as they did, being out, so caught out in the open with so much util thrown their way. The fact that they didn't die for that long is honestly a huge statement, you know, in their defense compared to what we would expect for that. Here, though, Ooh. Bridge, early pick on k -Pin. And looking for more now as they know if they can get onto the site quick, they the have the numbers advantage. They do have the numbers advantage, but still got to make sure you're playing it a little bit carefully here. A little bit of poking and prodding. I can't see. Once again, flushed out this time by the aftershock, keeping them stuck there. And they still can't get over there thanks to the efforts of the Swarm Grenade. SBL puts the spike down. We did see I can't see throwing out one of their own Swarm Grenades, but so far nothing happening there just yet. Now it's going to be the lockdown. We have seen Stan getting one kill. And unfortunately for Bridge, as they're trying to throw out the paint shells, is not able to convert the kill onto I can't see. Thankfully, though, the lockdown does get destroyed. Still a chance here for Tennessee. Play, but here, SBL got a huge angle remaining. looking for a little bit more. Sadly, that's going to be all she wrote for UConn. King got in the back line and erased everyone else. And so far, King is absolutely living up to their name not just in the aggressive positioning and how well they're staying alive, but in these huge mechanical clutch plays near the end of rounds. King up here with five kills, most in the match so far. And I think actually what really helped out here for that round was Bridge kind of, so they kind of sacrificed their life, but the paint shells took out the lockdown. So that Mm -hmm. May that let Tennessee continue to hold the site, and because they were able to hold on to the site, UConn really ran out of options for how they were going to be able to take it back. Things have been evened out once more. This is the first kind of push that we're going to have here going this direction. It's going to be the defoliate and cape and wombo sheriff combo. A second one is going to be happening. This is not good here for Tennessee. They had the rifles in hand, but defoliate just has the aim. Same for cape hit. Still that sheriff in hand, not able to pick up one of those rifles. Now that the volunteers have been giving up a little bit more space, they are going to grab that, that rifle, give themselves a little bit more firepower to match that insane aim that we've been seeing. And as the volunteers rotate around here, Nami and Kpin still have a really good angle. Defenestrate has the ability, or Defoliate, has the ability to run right back around to their teammates right here with them. This angle is about to get so rough on the retake. It's the slow walk on the site comes. BBMG trying to find a bit of a spot to counteract this aggression in tower. Over in the sky. Oh, great movement there. Takes out K-Pin. Rolling Thunder hits him though with the return, trying to stop that fire. But there's another one coming the other way. You gotta turn around, friends. The run through tower. He cuts again onto SBL. I mean, trying to find it finally will. So much util out of Nami there. So much looking for their teammates to come back around and find the pinch. 
these volunteers look for so long, but in the end, just not quite enough. And the Huskies come out with the cool That they do. That was just the explosive opener from Devoliate and the explosiveness from K-Pin. All those sheriffs got three kills. I mean, that opened the door wide open. Tennessee tried their best. They used both of the ultimates there to try and stall things out for as long as they could. They just kept, they just, it was just, it just kept going from bad to worse to even worse once they got hit with the concuss. Like we saw, Nami comes up right from behind, still holding out in arcade. Throws him right down to the ground. Now Yukon back in the lead, the three to two against University of Tennessee. A much larger stack for Yukon on B. Even with the KJ there, they want to make sure that they have the support be able to stay alive but this is the beauty of fracture loki you put the lockdown in tunnel something tells me this stack on b was kind of a call out of you know, the knowledge from that kg ult of like hey they've got kj they're going b they're gonna throw it in the tunnel let's have everyone stack right here ready to go in time and sure enough they guessed right well i'm gonna go down for not too many resources but empress is the return here for the huskies Nami all on their low sum trying to come through arcade. Everyone else is like stuck down here in tunnels or stuck in mid. Stan's going to take down Bridge. Defoliate looking for more, trying to get on site. That wall is going to help him do it as they take some damage. Kidman got that unlimited power. Palpatine's in the house and taking down two kills. Kpin looking strong, looking for a bit more, but King's got the shots on through the fire. Anyone have King? Yes! The smoke, not a wall. As a result, two kills coming through from the smoke collectively. One from either side, and UConn continues their lead. It was just really well played from UConn. They waited patiently. Tennessee, uh, so most of them were inside of the tunnel rather than closer to site, and I think what may have worked out a little bit better for them was getting that site presence earlier inside that lockdown, so that way they could have taken advantage of that lockdown presence plant the spike a little bit earlier and get a little bit more time to set up utilities set up smoke set up whatever they needed to all over the site rather it took them they were all inside a the tunnel then had to rotate to get onto site i'd hurt them a little bit there in the end now it's going to be in through dish going through sands and let a rip from bridge as that showstopper, at the very least, has stopped Stan. Oh, a really good aftershock that Defoliate was not expecting. Bridge is putting in the work right now. Gets a weapon upgrade. Drops the Stinger in favor for a Vandal because, I mean, like, really, who wouldn't? It's the 3v5. Yukon still has good opportunity, but Tennessee has firmly entrenched themselves on this site. The ooh, fast lane comes up. K-Pin adjust themselves over to there. I can't see. Let's go over to Tish, but it is going to be the firing squad. You saw how much bullets were going over onto them. Now, another flash from Nami, but the flashbang is just going to be met once again with a hail of bullets and curves with a 3K on the Stinger. What is that? Our second thrifty for the evening, Loki. Yeah, what are we feeding these duelists on their save rounds? Both times on the saves. The duelists come up clutch. You know, they get those huge opening kills, they even out the guns, and then it's just all the way through, no hope for the other squad. If I remember correctly, that was a flawless Thrifty as well, entirely opened up by Bridge there, going on the insane play. Also, credit to SBL for opening up one of those kills, you know, trapping uh, the Reyna in the corner and just absolutely rolling on it. Now, Bridge trying to get a replication. Defoliate not going to let it happen twice. They know better. And Bridge is going to fall as a result. Good job pulling off of that angle as well to make sure they stay alive and not waste too many more resources. Spike's going to go down, but with only three people left, it's going to be a pretty easy retake, I feel like. No ultimates either. Thankfully, though, it is two initiators, so an opportunity there, but it's continuously getting ripped away from them. K-Pin shows BBMG the business end of that. The two remaining members of Tennessee are on site. Curbs trying to put up whatever they can, but SBL flashed, concussed everything in the world, couldn't do anything as K-Pin puts them down to the ground. Stan hits the defuse, and Yukon now up two. That... Honestly, Tennessee there with three left on a fracture retake did significantly better than I was expecting. You know, 
being able to take down three, get traded out every single time, that's honestly huge and a huge hit to the economy the as well as, you know, coming off of those rounds, UConn still doing pretty well on economy. They won the, th you know, or they lost uh, that last round before, but coming off two, still a whole lot in the bank. Losing three hurts them a lot, and now they don't have a full buy app, as you were saying. It's still gonna be Devoli holding this angle. I love that so much, hiding uh, towards Sands. No, they got it. They're confident. In it. Yeah, it really is. Okay, that's oh, that's well, one off the bat. Bridge gets a revenge now. kill. <laughs> Bridge Bridge gets a revenge kill. Knows that the Reyna has been chilling out there almost the entire time. Wants to get rid of them. That is going to be big. Now the smokes are going to delay University of Connecticut from actually getting onto site. Look how far back they've set themselves up, though, Loki. I yeah, mean, they are I, all the way into a different world because they know that the swarm grenade is going to be just g even more genius, Loki. They go all the way back because they know the rolling thunder is there and they can delay things out with the swarm grenade. But that molly might actually throw things back for themselves as well. The DPS is going to go in, but the pain shells are actually going to come up clutch and save the day. I can't see three. Thought it was going to be good, but time is still continuing to run out. King is indeed just saying, King me, baby. Okay, Ben, you can only do so much. They got to they gotta sprint out of there. Said could be caught inside of the dead nation. At the very least, so was BBMG. Talk about choosing the highest percentage play you can at every point. You know, giving that much space, giving that much area to go through, not having those outer layers to protect Spike is usually uh, not super fun, not a great play. There, though, Tennessee recognizes hey, if we're on site, we're going to be subject to Rolling Thunder, we're going to be subject to, you know, all of the util they have they're gonna be subject to just running them straight in let's play it that far back give ourselves that higher percentage and plant the bomb for it position around it use our util specifically to smoke and molly it off so that they can't aggress in properly and once we do that all we have to do is hold that one little inch of space and that's enough this time, Yukon losing out again on the mental game. Overextended onto A site, and that's a free plant. Not even a ton of util down for Tennessee. And time is ticking down now. 40 seconds left. I love this, though, from Tennessee. It was go, 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 go. We know we have the good advantage. I can't see three. They wanted to walk across the street. It's going to take a little bit of damage for that. BBMG's coming up big with two kills. It's been traded out by K-Pin, and I can't see. But Curbs is coming back around, and anyone who's trying to walk on the side is being met with so much pain. Not with King there. King is truly the king of this match right now. Things have been tied out once again, Loki. No thrifty win this time, but still getting the work done. Three kills on a save. That's, you know, about the minimum of what would be considered a good save round. And we see Connecticut now, guns back in their hands, only missing out on a $100 short of a full shield. Brutal for Nami. Uh, but the util is going to be more important, so better have that first. And this time, looks like they've gotten a little bit better on predicting where Tennessee is going to go. They're putting three and a KJ on this A site. k -Pin trying to watch Arcade, going to get flashed early, has to shrink it back. The concussion as well coming through, but I can't see. Oh Does gosh. it need to oh be up and cuts to make a play? Finds three and utterly stalls out this push in Arcade. They just all kept going up one after another on the rope. Oh my goodness, this is all going downhill for Tennessee. Curbs are going, on, going a little bit too slow through the smoke. Couldn't see where they wanted to go. Meanwhile, Stan saw exactly last where they wanted to shoot. That was Stan. Still, this uh, we are on the last round before the swap. Tennessee does have the opportunity to do even things out. 6-6 six, six in this half. That's what they're going to be shooting for. That's what they're going to be gunning for. And they have a lot of ultimates here to make that happen. UConn does as well. Unlimited power, Loki? Ooh. Hey, we don't know how, but somehow Palpatine returns. And throwing themselves right back in it here. K-Pin been popping off all match, especially with those unlimited powers. You know, they've got right. the 3K and clutched around earlier off of it to help out that Thrifty. Now, though, the KJ ult's going to come in on B and Nami not in a great position to react to that. Should Tennessee act quickly here, it's going to get very run. mean very quickly. 
Kojoy down. Can they get to it fast enough? Nami, brave on this angle. Oh, and it's because they know the Hellfire is right there. They don't need to worry. They can be confident in their team, counteracting that play. And now time is ticking off. And Tennessee has to pull a quick rotate out of here. Oh, but two of the Tennessee played that accurately though they still had two leaning towards a so that way they could go over there i can't see three is gonna be the one to make sure to anchor it down though unfortunately for them throwing down both of their swarm grenades caught up by the dog they know exactly where they are and so that lockdown is gonna be chilling out right there they can still kind of aftershock it but they're gonna do the same exact thing loki hit the hellfire bridge also with the show stopper has stopped the show of the foliant spike still planted spike still on the ground k pin now going in, throws out the fast lane, waiting for an opportunity to use their unlimited power, but it's been taken away from them by curves. No more power. D d oh, no. They, what? Oh my gosh. Wait, what? They can't. Oh, Sam was literally on uh, Loki. Sam was literally right there. I thought they had it. Oh my God. They almost got the ninja defuse. And then oh. the classic running up, they, they wouldn't have been able to reload in time. They had to pull out the pistol. And now 6-6 six, six on what my, in my opinion, what is a defensively sighted map. You should really be coming away with Fracture with, you know, seven, maybe eight rounds on defense. And oh now my gosh. Huskies have to find a way to play it. Talk about a close round 12 to lead into pistols. Tennessee, they, I, they have the momentum. You know, the, the rounds might be even, but Tennessee absolutely has the momentum right now. I just, I just couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm still in shock at that final round in the half. Uh, oof, stole my breath away at the very least. I got another A side leaning push. Actually, no, more going towards B. You have a two in arcade, one going through main. Meanwhile, two looking at A main themselves. Oh boy. Okay. K pin. They're waiting for the smoke to disappear. Now it's time to begin the aggression. It's time to begin the walk up. <gasps> Saw a little bit of bridge, but I don't know if bridge saw a little bit of K-pin. Maybe they saw... Yeah, they did. Okay. Flashpoint goes in. No kills. Here's the paint shells. Does a lot of damage. Catches out Nami. Stuck in the corner. Couldn't go anywhere. And that corner... Well, that's their gravestone. This is a really slow neutral push for Pistol. Foliate also going to go down. Husky is now only three strong. Stan trying to find the way onto the site. There's a lot of KJ Util they gotta get through first. And taking a ton of damage for it. King also has the shorty waiting for someone to take tower. Hopefully someone will. The trap's been laid, but if no one takes the bait, then not sure how much it matters. Never mind, matters a whole lot. As Stan just doesn't look up towards tower. Now King trying to eliminate the rest of the Huskies. Gonna find it. In Tennessee, what a king. can use this momentum. King, so strong at just waiting for this play to happen, for the, to come to them naturally, rather than trying to force this kind of stuff out. What a king. Truly, indeed. Tennessee, uh, is this the first time they're in the lead? I believe it is in this entire matchup, and it's all on the defense. They get the guns. They get the... Uh, they get a chance to convert another round pretty easily here, unless Yukon has another crazy moment with Sheriffs if Defoliate decides that it's time for me to go sicko mode and start blasting everyone in the face, or if K-Pin decides the same thing as well. You can see that they're still messing around with a couple of buys. Egg can C3 wants to have the Frenzy in hand, wants to have the Sheriff. Uh, sorry, the sh Light Shields. I said the Sheriff. My bad. So there we are. Yukon, straight up. Let's push on to b site. It is going to be a minefield, though. This KJ, more than ready to make sure that nothing's going to happen here. Yeah, and King's so good at hitting all these pulse bombs perfectly. Going to hear that skill orb as well, so they know exactly what's going on. King is back in hand, looking for I can't see three. Got to find them. There's one more in arcade, but they don't swing up the ladder in t or they don't swing up the rope in time. Instead, King's going to also take down Capen. Herb's now trying to find a little bit against this Yukon squad. Not going to find a ton. UConn, it though, looking plans? really clean here. Two to three with, you know, a couple of guns now. Make that one V3. Make that no V3. <laughs> yeah, the no V3s are always hard to win, Loki. It's almost impossible. It's, it's kind of impossible, really. <laughs> you need, you know, Riot just has to, like, strike down with God. You know, the internet God have to just <laughs> yeah. quick enough. Yeah, someone has to get, uh, someone has to get banned mid-game. Mm -hmm. So... 
This has actually been an interesting case study so far of what we've seen in these pistol rounds. University of Tennessee lost their initial two. University of Connecticut now losing these two here, both on the attacking side. Now, Yukon has the guns. Tennessee won that out. Yukon here has to make sure they win this out. And unfortunately, I think for Tennessee, UTK. Just kidding on me. They think they're gonna go. They think they're gonna go A. There is two at Dish at the very least. But it's still a, it's still leaning over towards B. Bomb also on B. Great positioning from Stan here as well to try to gain that intel. Try to see if they can't hear any audio while also getting a clean swing around on arcade, trying to clear things out. Issue is Yukon doesn't know that no one's there. They don't know they have a free pass, and so they're wasting so much time just kind of hanging out right here, you know, waiting for the starting gun. Yukon, been... as I was, Tennessee, also just kind of wondering, you know, hey, what's going on? Where, where are they? <laughs> They've all been so patient that it's really like, yeah, okay. We know, we know that KJ likes to set up a tower, so we're ready for this KJ. But it's like you said, they're, 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 they're totally debating them. They're wasting out so much time. But I don't believe this from Tennessee, though. Also, They're the still on A. Now here's the util. Like you said, everything's being used. Everything's being committed. Look it up. This is just, they, their, no their brains here. are exploded. There's and then no it's like, here. what? <laughs> oh, I mean, honestly, that's not a huge loss for Tennessee either, though, because of the yeah. amount of util that Watching they just smoke. dumped into absolutely no one. They only out. had Stan one smoke. Fully eight, gonna take down SBL. Stan trying to run back here. They've got Cape in covering their butt. Tower also taken now as no one was there to stop them. Bridge finds the fully eight, so they're still even. Smoke's going out to cover the angle. We're gonna see the push onto Nami. Not quite. That flash being Ooh. just enough, but Bridge has got the aim. In oh, Tennessee, one as enemy possibly remains. out mind. No, not out mind gaming them because uh. Doesn't matter how big your brain is when you have an orbital satellite that can throw down fire. So at the very that's that, that's really good from King though <laughs> at the very last second to get I can't see so doing some damage to the economy. But there we have it. Yukon managing to win out in the gun round and now Tennessee is able to make some buys of their own. It was just yeah Yukon <laughs> that was a that was a long round but for all of the like wrong reasons yeah. right Loki. I mean, yeah, and it still went Tennessee's way in the end. I mean, three kills and ult. What more can you really ask for from, you know, leading into that round from a bonus round? You've absolutely set yourself up to win, you know, the next five rounds that you need for Tennessee. UConn, not in a good spot after that one. Right there. No, they're not. They're going to go for the tunnel strategy with the KJ, set the lockdown in there question mark hold on a second i can't see three waiting for a moment uh, the moment might be ripped away from them though because bridge has shown defoliate what it means to be put down into the ground yeah this is not gonna be doing that they're gonna put down the swarm grenade activate it and then they tried loki they tried but yeah. it turns out rockets go pretty fast even faster than when you're trying to run away from them i mean it's not rocket science they they, they go they go zoom <laughs> Nah, that, with that showstopper, that evens it right back out. Yukon here, not in a position to really execute any kind of play. They've quickly gone from throw down a KJ ult and have a clean pinch on people trying to run away to maybe try to get a couple kills, you know, impact the economy. They've, you know, they've got Nami on site standing. trying to find a kill. Not going to happen. Crosshair placement not there. Left. Actually flicks off of the target. And Stan just trying to run, no, not even trying to run away. I'm gonna find a kill on Bridge and that's gonna be it. So no spike money and only one kill. Yukon still not looking great. And th this is, you know, this is why I say you've got to find more rounds on the defense of Fracture just because the, the retake is too good on this map. It is. And I mean, <laughs> Tennessee, it it feels like they have really come online right now. They were, I, I, I think at the very beginning of the game, maybe a little struggling, maybe getting warmed up to right Loki, getting getting the jitters out, right? You're going up against UConn, number four team in the league. So, you know, may, maybe getting to your head a little bit. Tennessee though, so far has been playing 
some beautiful game of Fracture. This is really good from Yukon. Rolling together as a squad, rolling together as a death ball. It's all about using the guns that you do have to its most effective level. The only thing that they have to contend with is making sure the king is not going to do anything. And that's what Nami is going to take care of here. But it's back and forth action that is unstoppable. I can't see three. All they need is a stinger and a classy to get two kills. As BBMG, it's a 1v1. Oh my gosh. SBL versus Stan. Stan has managed to plant it down. But we still do have to watch out for... <gasps> oh! Stan stands tall. Stan stands tall, gets the clutch, and brings University of Connecticut to that eighth round. The only thing separating Tennessee and Connecticut, one round. Talk about an insane counter strafe there. I love that. Positions out in the open because they know, hey, they're gonna come around the corner and they're gonna think I'm either hugging this pillar or behind it. So I'm gonna stand out far enough that the crosshair won't be ready the moment that they know, okay, the adjustment's gone through. I've shot my first volley. Counter strafe comes in. No chance of a response from Stan. And the round continues their way. It does. It does indeed. UConn has three ultimates. Tennessee has two. So a lot of options still available. I wouldn't, I would imagine kind of maybe wanting to save the orbital laser beam from the heavens above to make sure that they locked down. Isn't able to do anything here, though. Once again, Tennessee on a site. Free, all free for University of Connecticut. It's going to have to be quick here to go in with the guns that they do have. These are not the best, but neither is K-Pin being so far extended forward. Devoli has... You sneeze on them. You literally need to sneeze on them. That's all they needed to do. Unfortunately for SPL, their nose wasn't tickled. It's still back and forth, though. Two kills uh, for the side of Tennessee. University of Connecticut getting four at the very least, and the spike planted. King has the share. We know that they're a king. We know that what they can do. We know that they are awesome at this game. But even a king has their limits. Okay, we're just going and try to get the defuse, I guess. I, I respect it. Maybe you try to bait out one. Yeah, at the very least, they pull people back in to maybe get hit by bomb. Nah. Well, nice try. I mean, hey, you know. Sometimes teams leave a little bit too early, can't hear the bomb defuse, and then you manage to get it for free, just, you know, just off of that tiny, tiny well little for bit. It. Might as well. No, no reason not to. Um, now, guns in their hands, 9v9. Both teams looking for those four rounds in a row. And UConn, with some money in the bank at this point, if they lose here, they'd be able to buy rifles again next round. So they are looking very pretty coming into this one. Tennessee is going to have to win against three rifles in order to find that win. UConn only going to have to find their way against two from the looks of it. Very impressive of UConn to be able to swing things back into their favor after an explosive initial rounds to this half by the University of Tennessee. You can see that we're still waiting here, though. We know what might be happening. We know there might be a little lockdown coming from I Can't See, but they're still being very patient. And I do not to use it. Instead, we're just gonna chill out here. We're gonna wait for a moment. We're bringing it back out. I love the decision making here from I Can't See 3. They're probably working it out with the team, probably trying to figure out what we wanna, how we wanna approach this, well, and that, what could happen if we set it down because that orbital strike it's gonna be right there so if you want to capitalize on it you better move yep, with it, it yeah so you might as well just take this try chance to try to aggress on you know use the orbital strike as a smoke for your team basically and that's exactly what they do they haven't cleared tower king is still in there ready to swing around gotta find one looking for a little bit more and finally getting it taken down by capen now flash onto site nami gonna make these smokes are brutal. No one from Tennessee can get back onto site. And so even though their ultimate got immediately canceled out, they're, they're able to use it to their advantage by stopping the rotate onto site, one, and then two, using it as a giant temporary smoke. Such a genius move. And you see, that's why it took so long to get there. It was getting, making sure that the coordination was ready to go because once that lockdown was planted you had to go immediately and that was what i loved seeing here from university of connecticut that they were ready to take advantage of the lockdown because they didn't waste any time loki to get onto site and what happened when they got on site you throw down the smokes you go right in boom it was amazing and you even drew out the orbital strike this kind of a big victory in and of itself back and forth however two picks one for each side 
Tennessee, that's good for them though. You take away a little bit of pressure uh, from UConn. Go, go, go. Now it's gonna be the full A site push. UConn is just playing Tennessee like a fiddle right now when it comes to the mental games on what's gonna be happening with these sites. Yeah, it's a complete switch. <gasps> Moments on the last half. Oh, King, do they know? They they no know way. well enough to get the kill through the wall. He's gonna throw that pistol, actually. They are just, or throw that rifle, rather. They're just fine with a pistol and a stinger, all they need. Door opened by the squid, almost leads to King's death. Now, lots of flashes through. One can cause, can they find the kill on Nami? Yes, they can. SPL looking for more, no. And he gets shut down, but University of Tennessee on the save manages to find their way through the amazing play of King. This man stands so tall. Thrifty. This is what a th the third thrifty of the night, by the way, everyone. Unfortunately, we've lost BB. Okay, BBMG's back. Gone for a second. Now back with us. It's all good. All good. Tennessee's fine. We're all friends. fine here. Yeah, they just wanted to give us a small heart attack, but it's okay. Even things out once again, though, Loki, we're here at the 10-10 score line. Both of these teams really are. Uh, this is some determination for both of these teams. University of Tennessee, like we said, in the initial matchup against these two, were able to walk away with a 2-0 win. But you but like I said, it was also a hard-fought 2-0. And it looks like if it does happen again, it is going to be another hard-fought 2-0 or whatever the score line will be. What five round difference between them? Keep in mind the minimum rounds that you can have while still pulling out a 2 0 is a four round difference. So, literally, only one map away from the closest possible 2 0 you can get. Bridge here, a little bit of a trade as BBMG is going to take down Defoliate, and K Pen wisely decides to give themselves some space. And while we might be even in score, you know what? We're not even in that alt line up top. Huskies still have two ults on the board, even with one death. Ultimate power and that rolling thunder. Unlimited power is going to get thrown Ooh, out, but a lot of power from gosh. these post bombs. Can they even live through them? Barely, and they get to tower, but no one's here. King's on the... You know, there's just no one here ready for him. And as a result, Tennessee just takes on the stragglers. Kapin was not able to get anything out of that Neon oh, Ultimate. The only thing they took was a lot of damage. And so when King pops up their little KJ head, well, it's a free kill for them. The KJ v KJ duel and I can't see three. Turns out to be the better one. Numbers advantage though, Loki. Three is greater than one the last time I checked. Are you sure? I mean, I can only count to four, so that's pretty advanced math for me. Listen, uh, okay, I'm play-by-play -play brain, so <laughs> I'm, I'm in awe of your colored brain. Ah. Uh. I mean, what I'm what I'm in on is the brain out of the two teams. I, I I literally don't think I've ever seen a game in the EGF come down so much to the mental aspect of it. You know, trying to play of oh, I'm gonna fake this site and run back, or I know they're gonna predict I'm going to this site, so I'm gonna go on the opposite one. You know, the play there with baiting out the ultimate power, knowing it's gonna get sent, knowing they're probably just gonna run up to site and try to clear tower, and so being like cool run it you were just gonna take all the damage in the world as a result it's just so incredibly clean every time like it it, it just feels like a battle of mega minds back and forth right now it's, it's mega gigantic 200 iq minds now we have a timeout here right university of connecticut wants to use this i would imagine potentially to ruin the momentum of what tennessee has been building also a chance to figure out what we're going to be doing in these next few pivotal rounds they had enough money they still have they have a lot of money to be able to make some buys defoliate can buy four k pin give them the rifle ultimates are still there we have the rolling thunder we have the empress the only thing that tennessee had when i and, I, and when i say this only loki bridge so far has been pretty successful with their showstopper every single time they've used it they come away with one kill at the very least so this is gonna be a fast push we're just it's gonna be straight execution and by the way, straight execution, King is going to straight execute K-Pin, who was, well, wanted to neon on the site, and they're not going to be able to neon on the site. You know, sometimes the neon speed just increases the speed at which you die, um, is really what it comes down to. I, I love neon. Neon's probably my favorite person to play. Uh, with that speed, though, really easy to just speed to your death. Beautiful bridge there. Going to find Stan, and the numbers are dwindling. Rolling Thunders are traded as well. 
so no one really able to find yeah. clean aggression as King yeah. continues to stand tall up on this little high gun right here, utterly decimating anyone who tries to come their way one for a little bit more. Then gotta get the bomb pretty soon. It's, oh. it's just a fully in a 1v2, but King can cover the angle while their friend defuses and doesn't even the need timing. to see to get the kill. And with just enough time, the bomb's gonna get defused. The timing though, it was so unfortunate for Tafali because we had a Match little point. small window where King was able to see. And these King shots, they are. Oh my gosh, look at this, so juicy. Here we are, the match point. Now remember, Fracture is the map choice of UTK. This is a close, 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 close score line though. The 12-10 score line is something that is making you sweat right now. If you're both of these teams, University of Connecticut, though, these buys are a little rough. They're still able to make some full buys. They got the utility they need. But you really got to make sure you win this round because otherwise it's match over. Yeah, they, they had to do some you math as well to even get as far as they did on those buys. Killjoy coming down, but an early trade means it's not going to have as much as effect as you would really hope for. Smokes as well to cover that aggression on the side. And with no one there, Empress is also getting popped. But again, no one's here for them to really go after. They're gonna go for Arcade. King and Curbs are here. Curbs clearing that under, making sure no one's there. Oh, yes. The swing <gasps> on to Curbs. King saves it. King so good at just holding these angles and placing their crosshair just perfectly every single time. I'm, I'm honestly in shock at how that worked. Now, the lockdown comes in. Here's the thing though, Loki. There's an orbital strike right there that can be used to completely nullify it. Curbs, you gotta get out of there. Unfortunately, is not able to get out of there. It's gonna actually get taken down by it, but the lockdown goes along with it. And now for University of Connecticut, a chance to close this out. Talk about a valuable orbital strike there and talk about not having any money for uh, Tennessee as well. Curve's gonna call that timeout. Final chance to have something to. happen before overtime. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's use it or not, or lose it at this point. Last round in the game. And, you know, we've criticized teams about not using their timeouts earlier. Uh, better late than never, I suppose, for Tennessee. Um, you know, gotta use them. They're free, right? They're free. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, no reason not to. If you're having issues with momentum, trading rounds back and forth, pop the timeout. Give yourself some time. Big thing here, though is Connecticut's gonna have guns and Tennessee isn't. So I am I would not be surprised at all if we end up seeing like a 16-16 up on that uh, board above us. We're gonna be here all night, Loki. That's how <laughs> this is gonna go. We're gonna be here all night. We'll be I mean, passing map this one, until next week. Map one in week three went to overtime. Why would this be any different on the run it back? It happened on the second map though. And this is oh, happening did on it? the first okay. one. Okay. Yeah. I see, I see. So here we are, we're on the, oh my gosh. Uh, so already, right off the bat. And I think that too, uh, Connecticut had the idea of getting rid of Haven because that's where Tennessee did take that first initial win on. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Now we're seeing what's going to happen here. Also, I, I did lie to you earlier when I said it was a five round difference the last time they played. It was a four round difference last time they played. One going to 11-13, the other going to overtime. So, literally could not have been closer. And the trade here is gonna keep <gasps> that close. Why is I Can't See 3 so amazing at being concussed? Like, it doesn't matter if they're concussed or not. Every time they've been concussed, they still get a kill or two. Whoa, I, I don't know how that just happened. I, I don't know. Oh my goodness, King. Do stop the, the, the wait, no, scene? they didn't stop the plant. They got the plant. No, no one needs to see. Who needs sight? Who needs vision? That's, that's just, Unnecessary. That's for chumps. That's for people who don't know how to play the great game of Valorant. Holding strong at this doorway. K-Pin. Look for an opportunity for anyone to come in there. Instead, it's actually going to use to back off and back away. I can't see who's been chilling out up there. We're going to try and get the defuse, but here comes the concuss. Maybe able to catch somebody out. K-Pin to try and quickly readjust himself, sprinting onto there. Gets the kill through the smokes on the BBMG. No way, it's the 1v1. It's a oh, Nami, are you, are you seriously going to use oh. the classic? They didn't have that any, was a bold move. They didn't, they didn't have the reload. Switching you know, that was sides. the only option is to Over pull out the classic. Time. Had they tried to reload, they would have just gotten killed. Oh, every round, every round, every play. 
could not get closer. Please and now we're in overtime. Ugh, map number one. I, ho I hope no one has anything planned for tonight. No nice dinners. No, you know, dates they got to go on. Because, uh, better, better sit your seat <laughs> down. We're, we're not going anywhere. Our producer is crying in the background now. <laughs> it's just been brought to tears by what is happening. Meanwhile, excitement for, I'm pretty sure, everyone inside a chat as this is a scoreline, 12 to 12. University of Connecticut, we, we, they had to be given I Can't See 3, the biggest pass on the back for what they did there, being able to take three kills like that, even inside of a concuss, by the way. Hit with a concussion, perfectly fine. Stan is gonna use the molly, maybe be able to cut off, cut them off, and D so that's what they're gonna be doing. No one's gonna go through those smokes. It's gonna be defoliate to fall once more. Stan readjust their position. They gotta watch out, cause it's King. And King so far has been unbelievable. Here's the unbelievable. It does happen though. Stan wins out in that duel. Gets a second one onto Bridge, taking out the big ringers here for UTK. The aftershock to flush out BBMG. Only two HP left is actually going to use the Molly to prevent them from in the Oh my god, oh. Stan gets a third one. Throws down the smoke, but the Molly is still going to prevent them from actually getting onto there. Nami stops them in their tracks. Here comes another one, but it's just gonna be SBL using through it, but they don't know that the defuse is happening, and it is done. University of Connecticut back in the lead in this overtime. Only Switching needs sides. one more. Match We've had point. We've had stealth we've had clutches and comebacks in like a 1v3, we've had three thrifty wins, we've had using the other team's ult as your own smoke. What else could you want in this overtime match? If you, if there's a part of Valorant that you like to see, you've seen it this match. We've seen it, we've partaken in it, we've lost our minds over it, and so now really, what else can we expect coming out of the rest of this match? All UConn needs to do is win this round. That's it. Then they take the win here on Fracture. Tennessee is going to do everything that they possibly can to make sure that doesn't happen. Instead of sacking on site, they have spread themselves out across the map. Kind of defaulting right now. King is going to hold on a site. Holding the high ground. The smokes have come down in through Dish as they make the drop. But now, because of those smokes, it's actually scared them away. Two are going in through Arcade. Might be, maybe you think to themselves this might be a free site, but they've also put the smokes down there, or they look like they're putting, no, that's the Relay Bolt. So they use the Relay Bolt. Back and forth, though, for Yukon. They don't want to commit just yet because they know that a lot is riding on this round and that a lot needs to happen here. It's all back towards drop, though. Three seconds, something's got to happen. There's the smokes, there's the... Molly as well on top, trying to find out King. Gonna end up working, but the trade out for it. BBMG falling. Bridge grabbing another paint shells kill. Remaining. Using abilities to find colorful kills, and just like that, it is all down to curves in a 1v3. Two of the players for Connecticut, two of the Huskies on such low health. But the numbers advantage is there. Curbs. Having to play so safe, checking every angle, but for every angle they check, this clock ticks down ever more. Something's gotta happen quick. You do not have time to play this slow, my friend. You gotta find three kills right here and now. You're trying to find top, not gonna be able to do it. Drop playing too safe. This you too, Tom. Huskies dropping now. Pulse sprint, grenades out. It's just too much. Curbs finds one though, looking for more. They have to hit the defuse. There's no other choice for them but to stick it. K Pin knows that slides right on in for the action shot. Loki, University of Connecticut takes this win against Tennessee. 14 to 12. Oh my gosh, that was a match though. In a 14 to 12. Two round difference all the way to overtime. And a reverse of what we saw last time. Tennessee not giving up a map. In the last game, over three months ago, but this time the Huskies strike first. With that, we're going to go to a short break, but don't go anywhere. This one is going to be a lot of fun. Maybe break. <laughs> Thank you.
Week 12 of ETFC Valorant can only be described right now as what the actual heck is going on here. As our first match was a 14 to a 12 with the University of Connecticut being able to take that in the nick of time. But still, we have looking forward to our next map, University of Tennessee's map choice. Well, yeah, I think it was wait, some of these map choice, right? I think it was University, yes, uh, University it was of Tennessee's, correct? UConn's and... choice. Okay, there we go. All right. Or so this is choice, actually. My bad. Um, and from what I have heard, Tennessee has not lost on Lotus yet. They are a perfect score um, on Lotus. Keep in mind, it's a new map. A lot of new things. Everyone's still trying to learn their way and you know pick themselves back up. We saw last week looking at um, a couple of different matches, specifically against Cincinnati, Connecticut how much can change in just a week on lotus um so being good up until this point really doesn't give you too much of a heads up from you know the other team yeah we keep studying the vcts we see how the pros handle it we keep playing it ourselves we figure out how we're gonna handle it we practice lineups we figure out what the optimal rotation strategies are on Lotus, and then we just full send it and see what exactly happens here. A lot of rumblings saying that UTK undefeated. So far for Connecticut, they don't get to say the same exact thing as Cincinnati was able to take this map away from them last week. So maybe in that one week time period, they've been able to really learn from that matchup really learn on how they want to maybe shake things up compositionally speaking maybe the agents they were using just were not working for them well i mean cincinnati or as i was uconn's had a lot of time to learn how to play this lotus map you know they've seen it twice uh, in the two weeks coming up to this week once against cincinnati and another time against cincinnati so if you want to you know a solid you know independent variable to kind of test with well there you go on lotus um the first time against Cincinnati, they did really, really well. Beat them 13 to four. Second time though, struggled a lot more, 13 to seven, off of the back of a lot of coordinated aggression coming out of that Cincinnati squad. UConn wasn't quite able to hold up to it. Seemed like they kind of over predicted how much they could do solo with their aggression on that map. So going into this one, hopefully we'll see a change where they kind of turn that, that aggression down a little bit, group up a little bit more and understand that, hey, it's a long rotate map. Sometimes you just have to spend time waiting for your team. Exactly. Oh my gosh, what are we looking at here so far? Tennessee, they're hovering on some interesting choices. Same for UConn, defoliate on the Rays. Rays is a, uh, still in my opinion, a pretty decent choice for Lotus. Even with that boom bot nerf taken off, oh man, a whole five seconds from it. So I think still a decent choice and a decent way to aggress onto site. We're looking, Nami's still hovering over the Yoru. And if they bring out the Yoru, uh, I might I might scream a little bit because Yoru, I, I guess could work on Lotus. I, I'd love to I, see it if it could work. I mean, why not, I guess? Um, Lotus is kind of at the stage where anything can work if you do it right, I suppose. Though, just do, it right do, give mind, do give in mind, UConn likes to bait us out with their they with do. their agent picks. All right, I'm going to tell about last second. Um, and there's there's very little chance in my mind that they go with double duelists on Lotus, especially when, you know, the, with the amount of value that a good controller gives you. That makes a lot okay. more sense. Yeah, fade okay. with the intel, the dog around those short corners. That seems to be very, very applicable. On the other side, though, for Tennessee... Bridge still running this Reyna, who I think doesn't pull a whole lot of value on Lotus compared to agents like Rays, with you know how short all of these corners can be, and that near sight only being a near sight. If someone's holding close, it's just not effective against them. Nope. It's interesting that Bridge actually the entire dynasty lost the agents that they've selected are interesting. Stage not too out there. Same for Astra. SPL on the Sova. Right. What does Sova bring? Sova brings the shot cards. Sova brings the recon drone and the recon drone. But there's no stuns. There's no concusses. There's no flashes for this team. Really, the only thing you have is Reyna's near sight. 
and then curves on the cipher if someone decides to rotate in through one of the multitudinous <laughs> routes that they can take to sneak in through this map i think that's where cipher is really going to shine brightly and thankfully for tennessee they are on the defense side i'm it curious how this could work you're gonna use the cameras i guess to see out where c is going it's poking and prodding two through mid two going towards c main and the third to link up with the rest of the group I mean, honestly, Tennessee's calm just feels like it's built for, you know, those long range fights, which aren't super present on Lotus. I mean, if you're going towards A, there's that one super, super long hallway that you can go through trying to get to the rotating door, just trying to sneak in normally. But everything else on Lotus, I feel like is pretty compact, you know, other than CT spawn, I suppose. Cape in here, not gonna opt to go for the flash, just trying to take the fight. Mm. Not gonna work mm. out their side. Yukon grabs two kills off the back of it. King trying to trade it out a little bit, but only finding that one kill and now has to hide themselves away with that heal to go. Defoliate on this back and find SBL. Oh. Has the Pika's advantage, not able to grab it. Recon dart as well and throw them back off. Take the pressure off of SBL and let the rest of the team come through. Shock dart. Great setup for the kill headshot. SBL playing very cleanly right now in 3v3, but Tennessee has no health to their name, and Nami takes one advantage of it. Yeah. Oh, Nami! Just walks right over there, gets a third kill. I can't see three. Guess what they get to do because they're playing KJ. Solid out for days and days and days and days. SBL has to push forward. I can't see three. Literally, the three in their name is the same amount of health that they have. University of Connecticut doesn't care. They are going to be able to take this first pistol round on this attack. Yeah, and very, very cleanly as well it felt like they did a really good job of getting damage where they can stalling where they could only thing we saw that was just a little bit too much was a little bit of an overextend by defoliate but that's still to the cause you know they gave their life for the cause stalling out so much pulling out a ton of util and doing a ton of damage to all of tennessee as well i i really don't hate it i i often criticize you know playing that far up by yourself with no util to help you but that time, it's for the cause, you know? And sometimes you gotta take one for the team. You gotta take one for the team. King's taking a couple for the team, but putting out a couple for the team. Defoliate took a lot of damage through the wall, just chilling out there, wanting to get onto site. This is actually gonna be really free C site. And this is the bad thing about C, if you're gonna be the defenders trying to retake, it's, it's kind of a difficult site. <gasps> K pin. Oh my gosh, King thought it was going to be a free time to go into their backside. No, no, it's not. Oh my gosh, and then there's going to be the rest of Yukon hanging out back there. Bridge on this Reina, though. Gets the kill on the sand. Gets the overhealing as well. Undoes a lot of the damage. SBL to go in with a shock dart. But you're going in with a shock dart. You're not ready for the, everything else that could possibly be happening. Thankfully, Curbs in this stinger. And University of Tennessee is doing a fantastic job as the firing squad, though, to it. Really living up to the Guardian's name is indeed going to be the Guardian here holding things strong and tight. University of Connecticut, 2-0. Hanging on by the skin of their teeth as well. Dropped all the way down to about one health. And with that, they break through the force up. Matt Tennessee was going there. Aggressive play almost finds it through. Just one little bit of way, but they would have had to go on through to foliate. And that is no easy task. Man is locked in down right now and tennessee early here not looking as confident as we would expect for them on this lotus map yukon has absolutely learned over the past week they have indeed stan stan's learning a lot right now about how they want to take the head off a of bridge and they're going to do a really good job at that bbmg this frenzy play how are you going to do that how are you going to walk up like that and just get a kill here i can't see three Thankfully, was able to bring out their utility and get back into cover just in the nick of time. It's going to be University of Connecticut struggling to figure out how they want to poke into this. It's going to be, I can't see three walking by themselves over towards C, where Curbs is hiding. They have the shorty ready. Instead, it's all just pick up the old orb. Pick up the old orb. Get close to that lockdown. University of Connecticut, it's another free site for them. This time around, A instead of C. I can't see three now to sneak up in through B mid. Gonna be stalled out by the trips though. Yukon's doing a really good job of playing this long game here, making sure they get 
get all these skill orbs, making sure, you know, they get clean plants down to always add some more money in, and then also to get these clean rotates, trying to keep everyone alive. You know, a, a round win is great. A round win where no one dies is so much better, especially oh, when you can turret. get kills off of your turret. Utility turret. kills are the best kind, in, your, in my opinion. Nami here also doing a great job of stalling out, setting up I can't see three so well. This is a, such a good angle to hold, and again, only one death for Yukon here. They're just doing such a good job at, you know, playing this long game, keeping everyone alive, keeping these skill orbs up, playing that ult economy as well as the normal economy. And it's making life really, really hard for Tennessee, who they're having to bite on all the way to 50. Meanwhile, k has got $4,000 in the bank. So much money. That's a lot to get to work with there. I want to highlight what Nami did at the very end with the spike using their uh, snare to pull in the Sova. It was such a genius move. SBL thought they were safe, but the snare pulled them in. And with the way the spike was set up, it allows them to get an early kill like that. There we go, though. We see King being the king that they are. Was waiting on the other side of that wall. And it's, it's, it's heads for days. You just got to click the head. King realizes that. They understand. The recon drone unfortunately didn't have. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, King. That's what I'm talking about, Loki. That's what that's what Tennessee needs. I mean, hey, that's the first first blood for Tennessee so far this map. And not only a first blood, but a second blood as well. They just keep that pressure on. Nami now getting it stolen out by that Astro Orb. A little bit of a broken door. So the threat of a rotate through now present. Onto mid, but as I can't see three trying to find their way onto C, <gasps> get a sketchy little pulse grenade, but they've gotten found out by curbs. And so if bomb gets, if they die here Last and they drop bomb, standing. that's the end of this round. Might be the end of the round anyways, though, as uh, they are all that's left. King has a 3K. And oh, yeah. curbs, such a clean shot. Such a clean shot indeed. I can't see three. There was only so much they could have done there. Curbs was chilling up. Waiting for them to make their move. It was either go on to site or go back over towards the rest of the team. Uh, University of Tennessee getting their first round on the board. King with a really strong opener. That's kind of what blew things wide open for Tennessee to be able to win that. I mean, on, on Lotus, you have to have the strong opening. You know, I, I feel like pretty much every Lotus game is won in the first, like, five seconds of an engagement. You know, from, like, the first five seconds that a rifle is fired... The, the round's been decided. Everything after that is just a formality. You know, got to check off the rest of the sheet. Fill out the forms to turn them all in. And right now, that's been holding as the case. Whoever has first blood has been winning every single round. Connecticut now still with a good buy in their hands. They still have these rifles. Tennessee as well being able to buy up to match them after that good round win. And here... Connecticut seems willing to kind of take their time, take their space, take their old orbs, and just kind of get set up. It's going to be a lockdown. It's going to have to be going through the Cypher trip as well. This time around, just waiting for the right moment. Cages typically like to come up here. And unfortunately for Bridge, the first blood is going to be happening on them by the hands of Defoliate. Spike is going to be planted pretty easily for them here. Sends out the Prowler, might be able to grab curves, forces them away, and the location has been given up to SBL. Trying to figure out what they want to do, trying to figure out what they need to do. Curves it's hit by the Flashpoint. Now also oh, getting God, it's the Nightfall. That is actually a huge Nightfall too, catching not only curves, but three other members inside of it. Here is the enemy position is going to be revealed, forced away by the Aftershock, trying to gather as much time, draw out as much space as they can, we still have the swarm grenades on there. We still have concusses available. On top of that, the rolling thunder, if it needs to be expended, if it needs to be used. As we able to start the defuse, but of course, that swarm grenade is gonna tro like, throw everything into chaos. That's it. Time yeah. has been taken away. Tennessee needs to run. MVP <gasps> of the round, Father Time, and SBL loses their life for it. Great round by Connecticut. You know what I'm surprised that we're not seeing from Tennessee? They're not willing, they're not really holding mount. They're perfectly happy to just leave Cypher on C and not really trying to take that space, contest that old orb that Connecticut's been farming 
honestly. And I feel like Mound is also just such a good option to stall out everything, especially when you've got an Astra who can just lay down a star, get the smoke, and your team can rotate out safely if they need to. I, I feel like it's just, you know, they're leaving a bit on the table and not trying to cover Mound. And right as I say that, it does look like King maybe wants to change that, uh, that deficit up. It's like big gunfight starting over here on A as well. We're seeing University of Tennessee pushing far more forward than what we've been having time and time again. And you can see that it's actually working out really well for them to foliate. Oh, gosh, only probably has like 20 HP left. Gonna have to go in through the smoke as well. Still stuck on the other side. What are you gonna do with this showstopper? Waiting for the right moment, 10 HP. <gasps> Gets the kill, doesn't survive through it, but that doesn't really matter because the rest of the team has done so much work as well. Only two left alive. That's going to be the Sage. That's going to be the Cypher. And I don't know, at this point, it's going to be difficult for them too because there's also the Rolling Thunder that could potentially stop them in their feet. KJ is still alive, sets up the Swarm Grenades. Curbs is going to have a lot of work ahead of them, uses the Recon Cam to try and figure out Positions, try to figure out anything, but ooh, Connecticut is not going to give them a single drop. Last player standing. Here has an angle. <laughs> not a oh whole gosh, lot of perfect. life, though. Uh, that was perfect. Shutting that one down so quick. I think we're just seeing, you know, the the uh, the result of how much experience UConn has had on Lotus. I, I literally think they've played Lotus in an EGF match every week since it dropped. And mm -hmm. as a result, they've been able to test it time and time and time again. Okay, VCT is out. Let's see what they're playing. How can we adapt that to our style? How can we adapt that to the EGF style? You know, oh, we're playing it again in EGF again this week. Let's see how it goes. Because, like, scrims are great. Being able to scrim a map, you know, week in, week out, that's great. But being able to play it in a match against a team, you know, in a league that has an absolute culture is huge. And here, a quick trade out there we as go. once again, Tennessee not able to set up on Mound and getting punished for the aggression as they try to come out and find it. Maybe that's why they haven't been taking Mound, just because UConn is that good at taking it. At the very least, they got a kill though. They contested it, they fought for it, and they didn't give it up so easily. They may have lost someone, but they managed to get someone. And here's the most important thing too about what happened there, they took out the KJ. And so the post plan, if it does happen, when it does happen, because it looks like a site is going to be taken by UConn, it's going to be that much easier. There's a lot less pressure in being able to execute onto there. So a very pivotal win for Tennessee. It's not over yet. They still have the Hunter's Fury. They still have a revive that they can use, which I'm a little shocked they haven't used it yet, but maybe they want to hold it on into their pocket. Better opportunity, still abound for them to be able to use it. Spike has been blended though, UConn. Well, that's one way to do things. Another? No. I mean, it is a one save round. That's you know, not, not the best time to use uh, that revive. King here. Marshall in hand, trying to find a shot. Most likely just kind of wait, see if they can't get an exit pick here on this bomb. As running in with the Marshall would be uh, ambitious, to say the least, especially when Defoliate has a great angle. Ooh. Tries to take the shot there. Crosshair placement isn't exactly where they want it to be. And with that, they get a Phantom, and I think that's going to be all she wrote. Yeah, yeah King willing to just hit, you know take the Phantom in the next round, play that long game. Just save it. Like you said, play the long game. They s Tennessee, like you said, in that safe round, they didn't overcommit too much. They still have all the big ultimates in their pocket. They still have Revive, Cosmic Divide. And I like this as well, a yeah. timeout, because I think they're going to have the discussion right now, Loki. What do we do with those ultimates? Where do we want to get the most effectiveness out of this? Because that Hunter's Fury could delay things out, could maybe potentially get a kill here as well. Cosmic Divide to cut off sight lines, maybe looking for the post plant. Then you still have Empress and Revive. All about the coordination and take away the momentum from Yukon. I mean, at this point, you, you've you lost the ability to, uh, you know, come out with advantage in this half. I don't feel like that's too big of a deal on Lotus. I feel like you can pretty easily build up momentum, especially on the attacking side here. And find your way back into it. But you still, you know, you don't want to give up too many rounds, absolutely. You want to take whatever you can get, especially with four ults on your side. Using those properly, not overusing them, you know. 
is going to be so huge on these last couple of rounds. And getting set up on this defense, getting some momentum back, can translate pretty easily into offense. You know, at least figuring out where to stand, how you want to position, what angles that UConn is really, really strong at. You know, maybe what they're using for their post points and what's effective, give them a taste of their own medicine. Because at the moment, Tennessee, one round out of seven, both of UConn's, you know, streaks coming as three round wins in a row. Tennessee doesn't stop it. It starts to get really, really hard to try to find the way back in at all. Bridge here is going to take mound as well. So first thing, you know, first time we've actually seen Tennessee able to set up on mound. And it's not going to matter because we've got an A push and they're throwing a ton of resources that way. Got to get it. Got to take it. Curbs is the only one here, and it's going to be them to back off as well. You know, that's okay. There's a lot you feel in this direction, so rather to play it safe, you're going to set down the trip there. So if anyone walks into it, King will be more than happy to take full advantage of this. Now it's time to plant your stars, gravity well, to try to put up some smokes. University of Connecticut slowed down big time. This actually gives University of Tennessee a chance to set up. Yeah, Spike's still not down. I don't think we've seen the clock drip this far quite yet. University of Tennessee hasn't taken too terribly much space as a result of what they've been given. They're kind of just left. playing these sites right now. And the rotate's actually gone back you towards C. It. So Reyna and Sova won't be here in time. Rolling Thunder and Cosmic Divide up. They're going to catch one, just King, in that Rolling Thunder. Astro Star, enough to slow it down just a little bit. Still trying to find a space to plant. Haven't been able to, finally. Spike's going down with 10 seconds left. Hunter's Fury in, tries to stop it, not gonna be able to. Only pushing forward, gonna get caught out by BBMJ and the Hunter's Fury. Great shot there, but I can't see three is willing to return. And now Bridge and the Empress immediately shut down by Nami. Beautifully well done. Here comes the defuse from King. The wall goes up to delay things out, but they don't have a chance to be able to make that defuse actually stick. And so now Stan has the opening through the wall. They have the hole to see King's head, and it's gonna flick it right off. Curbs, you gotta watch out behind you, my friend. They do indeed. It's still the 2v1. All they have to do now is salt for time. Curbs, if, if, it's gonna be so hard for them to be able to do it. And Nami, really all they have to do is just keep jiggle peeking to make sure Curbs can't hit the defuse. Curb's gonna go down with it. Big win here for UConn. You know, I didn't know that UConn had a sixth player, but uh, you can actually see them on their scoreboard right there. The name is Father Time, and they are doing an amazing job. UConn's so good at controlling that clock. You know, that star, great at pulling off the plant, gives them time to break down the wall, and then at that point, yeah, just jiggle peek your way all the way home. One great shot ends up being all you need to get that plant all the way through and tennessee continues to slip in this round win yukon on another conversion seven rounds in the book probably going to be eight after this one assuming the conversion goes as planned and that's going to be days, five rounds in a row so yeah and oof look at this tennessee all gripped up in mid already bridge taken down and with that gun advantage on the side of the huskies this is going to be a free C site for Connecticut. It's, it's getting even more freer. It's getting even more freer, Loki, because Devolian has gotten two kills alone in mid by themselves. There is no more Reyna. There is no more Sofa. There's no utility to be able to entry onto site when it comes to this post plant that's about to happen here. Really, you had to hope that King is able to even things back out with two kills of their own. Coming in through the rotating doors, BBMG is going to feel the full fury of K-Pin here. But in these save rounds, really all you want to do is try to take away as much as you possibly can from Connecticut. You want to deal as much damage to the economy as you can. You want to get as many kills as you can and try to prevent anything from happening here. Spike hasn't even been planted yet by Connecticut. They're still holding on to it. And with only two members remaining from Tennessee, Connecticut electing to respect still though. The respect comes in. And the first time I've seen this in a long time, a B-side plant. I mean, that's a great play, though. You know, don't push what you, you know, don't push in to what's not given oh, to you. No. Take what you can. Take the, you know, be defoliate. like water. Flow through it and defoliate. Defoliate. Flowing all the way to the other side of Four kills. the volunteers. Four kills, eight rounds, only three left in the half. In Connecticut, one round away 
from offensive perfection as they've got five rounds in a row. And look at this economy all down the line. K-Pin's about to hit max. Everyone else not too far behind. Only N Nami, the brokest member, the poorest member on the team, 43k in their pocket. They could have a couple of round losses in a row and still come out on the other side rich as can be so university of connecticut they're feeling pretty good about themselves and i would too with this kind of score line eight to one it's oh another seaside God. push the mound curbs just can only do so much by themselves even on this cypher really what can you do to stall things out oh well, that's a good way to stall things out get the kill six hp though just got to try and do what you can but bbmg things are still happening here nami gets two of those kills but the 2v3 university of tennessee not going down without a fight, and they are punching back hard right now. I can see three, though, still up. I can see he's been doing an amazing job installing. Huge Nightfall as well. That's extra time down. Wall is going to come up. Not going to be able to really catch too much, though. This dog being huge. And Killjoy Locked up down. as well now. Add in a little bit more. Trade out means we're in a 1v2, but with this Killjoy, that's just their way. Two seconds now. If they just wait, they're gonna get the the tain. There it is. No way. Oh no. no way. Oh no. That, that shouldn't is have happened. Brutal for Tennessee. That you can't let that happen. That shouldn't have happened. That should. That shouldn't have happened. They just oh. stood in there. They just. I, they, and they, it, they, they gambled on the t on. I can't see peeking, but why would you peek when you know they're there? Just jiggle peek it. Keep the intel. The the diffuse doesn't come out in time to force them to peek. I, I guarantee too that Connecticut was yelling at I can't see three. Just don't do anything. Wait for yeah. it. Wait for the yeah. wait for the lockdown to go off. Because why why would you do anything else? I mean, until you hear the defuse, why you don't even have to act. You can just wait it out, and you know they have to come defuse pretty quick there because you know time's ticking down. You did such a great job stalling with your ults. That's just brutal. And here, Tennessee tries to play mound. Not gonna happen. UConn so clean on these seaside pushes. They want to go aggressive. I, I liked it though, Tennessee. They don't, they're running in these save rounds once again. You got to do whatever you can. All right, we walk through. Another kill for Defoliate. Ooh, okay. That was kind of nice though from Curves. You get the, you get the lopping the head off. Hey, another one. What are these headshots on these marshals? Okay. All right. Tennessee and King going for another one. Just shooting through the smokes. Trying to run away. It's oh! another one before they fall. That actually, this is actually a really good round from Tennessee. It's a really, really clean Last save round run. before the Last round of the half, though, so whatever economy damage you're really looking for, uh, not going to matter. Connecticut has too much of a nest egg, and yep, it's the last round anyway. So, last chance for Tennessee. UConn so far, only one blemish on their attacking record. Tennessee looking to put a second one on the board. I, I really don't know how likely that is because so far the Huskies have just been insane on this attack. I, I, I really can't find fault in their play. Their executes are clean. Their util is clean. Their aggression so perfectly measured oh, and aggression. backed up. Oof, I think that's the first showstopper that we've seen not get a kill actually in this match. Then it says, okay, if I didn't get the kill with the showstopper, let me just go ahead and get the kill. With the Vandal, it's going to be just fine. Okay, now the recon camera. The camera has managed to find out where Defoliate is. Now King is going to use that revive. Oh, hello, a shorty. Oh, that was not the right time to use that Defoliate. Blinded and hit with literally everything. This might still be in Tennessee's favor. The Cosmic Divide comes up. Spike still planted. And so now you just get to play these sight lines right here. The Cosmic Divide is going to take away so much of that sight. And so you really only have... So many options. Stan comes away with a 2k. Walks right through the Cosmic Divide. Once again, though, all about the... Oh, so time. the, the back and forth, but Nami stands tall against the clutch. On the other side, here we have it. 11-1 going into this half. <laughs> Listen, Connecticut, this is like a whole different team from last week. Oh, my God. I, I, I can't get over the timing from Nami on that. Perfectly splits the volunteers dodging through oh curbs goes in just crosses with them you know trades the positioning that gives the 1v1 onto the spike mid diffuse no way they're coming back from that and then at that point nami just has a 1v1 in open space they know where curbs has to go but curbs no clue where nami is is there able to just 
you know, take their own movement wherever they wish and just closes it out so perfectly. Connecticut can win a pistol and a conversion. And that's 13-1, baby. And we're seeing why the composition of Connecticut is so powerful. And I think we're going to be seeing it here again in defense. Because look at what I Can't See 3 can do so much better than what Cypher brings to the table. They have turret. They have swarm grenades. They have so many different options in their pocket to stall things out. Look at how much they stalled it out just by themselves. They may have fallen, but they were able to get the kill. Thankfully, though, for Tennessee, they got one more here. So, not the worst thing in the world. Now they have full C site control. So, Connecticut kind of making the same mistakes from what we saw from Tennessee in these initial rounds. One enemy remaining. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, all down to K Pin trying to find a bit. But in that gunfight, 2v1 not coming their way. And Tennessee brings three people in the next round. So, not any pistol conversion on the minds of anyone today. Yukon here, still on the pistol. And I can't, I can't blame them too much for playing that defense the way that they did. I think they overdid a little bit of their aggression on Seasight the moment that they knew, you know, there's five rushing in, they're popping the util. I think he was trying to step back at that point and play retake. But no harm, no foul on that pistol. It's really kind of a toss-up of who's going to find their way in. And volunteers get to have the conversion round now. Can they make it happen? That's going to be the real question for Tennessee. Or is Connecticut going to stop them in their tracks? Oh my gosh, they're just going to hide in some... <gasps> a bridge. If they literally just walk in right here, that's going to be f such a free kill. The smoke goes away. I can't see... <gasps> I can't see three. Does a little peek. Whips out the shorty! Oh! <laughs> Beautifully well done. Beautifully well done. Did they just bait themselves into a shorty kill? I think they did. They used themselves as the bait. Why? That's wild. Especially with the movement to back that up. You know, having just enough angle to peek, they're king. Gonna take down Defoliate Guardian in their hands, not missing that shot. We know exactly how King's mechanics can do. Planted. You're gonna have to deal with I can't see three and a stinger though, and I don't know that they really have the distance to fully negate stinger. Uh, now that they've backed up all the way, they absolutely do. Still though, King took a lot of damage. Yeah, they did. Yukon's not okay. a bad place here. Huskies still have four v four. Need to go into sight. I can't see three. Great angle onto King, but SBL doing work on sight. There it is. Two v two now. Is. Make it a one v two. It's just down to I can't see three, but they've done their damage. Three kills, that's great. That is great. That's a lot more than what we were expecting. Okay, Whoa. make that a third one. Is this really going to be maybe, happening maybe. from I can't see? They run up. No Whoa. way do they go in with a shorty and get the kill. Four kills for I can't see three. And even though they lose out on that round, they took down the entirety of UTK. All of them. It's going to force them to buy up. That is insane i mean hey we talked about on attacking side huskies are good at the long game and that's a long game play right there gets five kills out everyone on tennessee has to buy up and they're not looking super pretty for it you know they can't they can get guns but they can't get full shields and they can't get full utility with it whereas huskies clean across the board that's full shields on everyone they just need to play this defense clean. No one's pushing on mounds. Instead, they're looking to contest this mid push, which is called out correctly because Stan's already got a kill. And they can absolutely find more they here with the numbers advantage. And they get SBL through the smoke. SBL on one health. Barely survives through. There's the flash out looking for more, but the smoke again. Oh, great timing on the flick on the beat, uh, onto bridge. They were coming in through the rotating doors. Thought this was going to be a nice shopping trip of kills for them may have had the idea, the notion in their head, this is gonna be the flank of a lifetime. They're not gonna see it coming. Uh, unfortunately for Bridge, it kind of re got reversed on them. They didn't see that one coming. University of Tennessee, they're trying to decide what's the move? Where do we go? What do we wanna do? UConn is still at the full numbers, not full health, not full strength. University of Tennessee is in a weak position. You can see. King has left themselves behind. They're anchoring down over on mound. They put up the wall to deny any flanks coming in at the very least from that direction. Of course, you have left. mid. Still a lot of opportunities. 
30 seconds left. Time is running out. University of Tennessee has to make their play here and now. Smoke, they're just trying to throw in all the utility they can. Grab any intel, stall out the time, and rotate back onto site. Tennessee has to go. They got to make a play right here, Ten right now. Left. But the players from UConn are here. A kill, though. We'll open up just enough yeah, space. Went. Grenade out. Ooh. SBL barely getting away with their life and losing curves at one time. SBL totally on an island. And Stan makes use of it. The Foliate knows exactly where King is, but King. Well, not, not without a fight! Regicide ends up coming through from Nami, however. And with only two down, Tennessee not having anything in the bank. They're gonna have to force up here. Whereas UConn, Mouth absolutely point. where they want to be for this last conversion that they need. Look at those buys. There's, they have to. There's no other choice. UConn, not in the best position either not perfect but no. still able to make uh, some really three i mean three members are able to make full buys and really only defoliate and k pin are the ones suffering not like university of tennessee is though this is no this is not good early hunters very here trying to clear out this mid area gonna get slowed down by the concussion not really finding anyone but does grab the bridge a kill on the k pin that's huge Stan immediately trades it back, back on the King. This regicide is brutal. Nami oh my takes down Bridge, and those are the two big players for Tennessee. I can't see also has that lockdown. Not gonna matter though when you've already got possession of bomb on your side. Yes, indeed. <gasps> Don't fully you're gonna get away no with it way. again, aren't you? Oh, no unfortunately, <laughs> a couple of shots here and there, but there you have it. University of Connecticut, 13 to three in this map, two to zero. In this series, your winners, they won the rematch, Loki, and they won it big time. Yeah, that first map, exactly what we expected to see. You know, close map, both teams kind of playing back and forth all the way to overtime. Lotus, however, uh, Tennessee might have been undefeated coming into this one, but UConn's been grinding it. And you might win a page from your victories, but you learn a book from your losses. And as a result, UConn has learned and absolutely showed indeed they have uh now we're gonna go and throw it to a short break see if we can get things set up for an interview with our winning team of yukon so we'll be right back How is the team feeling? Look.
city of Connecticut, hot off of their win, we have Stan, the controller extraordinaire. Now, Stan, first of all, a big congratulations to you and your team. This was a rematch against University of Tennessee where they 2 0 you the first time. This time around, though, a big 2 0 from your team. How are you guys feeling? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, we're feeling great after that win. That Lotus was uh, pretty reassuring of ourselves. And uh, it was a great fracture match too. Shout out to the Tennessee guys. Ooh, that was a that, that was a nail biter of a fracture match for sure. I know that Loki and myself, we were at the edge of our seats. Yeah, was, it was it's a close game. That was absolutely insane. What I want to ask you about though, starting this season, y'all were one and two through the first three weeks. Now you're the number three team in the EGF. How does it feel to have you know? Turn the ship around, not that, not just that quickly, but that dramatically. I mean, we had full confidence in every match we're going into, so not that much of a surprise for us and the team. Yeah, we just we just play us, you know. Mm -hmm. So I do want to say that Lotus today was um, insane. Is there any special trick that y'all have to Lotus? Anything you're looking for going into it, or do you just know it, you know, that extremely well? I mean, hey, I guess we're pretty confident in our Lotus now. I mean, after that game, but I don't know. There's still work to be done, as always. Well, you know what? That's always a good attitude to be able to take in as a team. Always knowing that there is room for improvement, but being able to take joy in the victories, especially after what just happened here tonight. So uh, to close things out, Stan, anybody you want to shout out? I mean, yeah, shout out to the team. Shout out to coach, people watching. Yeah, thanks for supporting. Absolutely. All right. There we go. Well, everyone, that was Stan, the University of Connecticut. Big thank you for coming on. Looking forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the season. And that is that is going to be it here for all of us at the EGF3 channel at the very least. But I still believe the other channel is still going on with their own Valorant games. So if you want to go and check them out, make sure to do that. A big thank you to Hippie for the production and the observing. A fantastic job as always. Loki, any final words before we jump off for the night? I think you got it pretty much. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. We'll be back again next week for some really exciting times. And there's a game that I think we're all looking forward to. It's going to be William & Mary versus UConn. That is going to be an explosive match. The number one versus...